That's perfect. Oh, see, look at us problem solving together. <laughs> Friday celebration yeah, is Friday. not live, no. but it is Friday and it's going to go live shortly. Jim and Renee here from Tripods with special guests, Nutty. Nutty. And of course, Nutty comes first. And we also have. There she is, a little sleepy, a little sleepy from a big walk. There's our hero. And we have Stefan and Genevieve. From Very from special Friday. members. Right. Talking to our heroes. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, You're oh, very God. special members of the Tripods community. We're sharing your story today first because it's such a classic example of the Tripods recovery roller coaster. You know, the diagnosis, the shock and awe, and then Nutty the hero who had ups and downs. And is she... here we are a year later. You What were you saying just now? The oh, tri and, uh, We're almost a year to... We're, we're a year to the week of when the surgery happened. Yeah. That's amazing, considering what buddy has gone through. So why don't we talk about that? Yeah, let's. So I one of the reasons I wanted to share your story this way was because um, every obstacle that could be thrown at a person during recovery happened to you guys. Yep. So <laughs> it's it, it was so touch and go for so long. And we always try to be upbeat and, and optimistic and hope for the best during a recovery. But I'll tell you, you know, there were times when I was like, oh my God, I hope this dog just please let her recover and have a good life. And I was scared for a while. And we've, so we've seen sad stories where yeah. they don't. And I've seen like instances of lots of different things Nutty went through with single people, but you went through them all. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what happened? Let's Talk about that, you guys. Let's let's talk about her story from from the beginning. What happened <laughs> from the beginning of uh, uh, like when you got a diagnosis? Why the, the diagnosis amputation was. recovery? Oh, so, oh yeah, that's yeah. It. it. Starts right at the right at the beginning. We got the weird parts. Yeah. So <laughs> right at the beginning, it was like uh, out of nowhere. One day, she was just walking a little funny. But um, by the way, just a so just a little funny that I didn't even really clock it, but Genevieve did. Yeah, he thought I was being paranoid. I called the vet and was like, she's sort of wobbling. Her her gait is a little weird. And they instantly were like, that's bad. Bring her in. We got an x-ray and they found a big lesion on her bone and her femur on her back right leg. And it was like within two hours of noticing something was wrong uh we learned that um she 99 percent has a uh, chance has osteosarcoma um which is a very aggressive bone cancer that without intervention leaves you know one to three months and how um, old is oh, she's yeah. 14 14 senior. so a hey, senior dog instant diagnosis out of the blue cancer yeah uh, horrifying and, uh, you know, we talked to like five vets, four radiologists, two oncologists, all of them agreed that there was a 99% chance it was osteosarcoma. You need a biopsy for 100% chance, 100% uh, guarantee, but it's bone biopsies are really painful and it takes like a month to get the results, at which point if we did, hadn't, if, if we didn't intervene for a full month, it, our options would be out. And... So it was like within five days, I think, of noticing that she was walking a little funny, she was having her leg amputated. Wow. Um, and it was horrifying. It was terrifying. Um, it was just so, so a lot of this stuff, by the way, in real time, if we'd already known you would have been so much easier. Yeah. And it proved so much easier the second we started talking to you too. But the first thing is that, that you've talked about in, in various Zooms and videos and stuff is like, okay, how do we know if we're making the right decision? What are the criteria required to check off to make this decision? You know, and then because something we're doing it and we think we think it's right. Oh, the biopsy, the this, the diagnosis, the surgery. And then the coming out of the surgery was actually that eclipsed the rest as the scariest part where we had been, um, it had been really understated how hard the recovery process would be. I remember the first time we connected with you two on a video we let you know kind of the, I don't know, like the recovery prognosis or recovery well, the vet, the vets, and every, you, you both were kind of like, yeah, that's not how it goes. Well, it was like every vet and surgeon and oncologist, and we had so such a small period of time to prepare for the surgery, talked to as many people as we could in that time. And everybody was just so casually like. Won't even notice, bounce right back. They bounce right back. 
uh, you know, three legs and a spare, which is true, but it's instantaneous. They'll just be fine. They figure it out on their own. You don't have to do anything. Age and size has plays no role in the recovery. Like none of that was factored in. Basically. None of that was factored in. They said she'd be walking on her own in two days, and within two weeks, she could just go back to her old physical routine. You That's know. often the case, and vets tend to see it all the time, so they kind of play it off. But in addition to the typical difficult recovery, you guys live yeah. Talk about what upstairs, your stairs, right? I, so yes. talk about so we were, yeah, we were how recovery went. Yeah, so we they called us and said, uh, you know, she's walking on her own. You can pick her up. We got there, and someone we never met handed us our not walking dog, and uh, you know, a one page generic post op instruction printout, and sent us off. And uh, on the printout, there's this thing about how you have to very short walks multiple times. Two a day, minute walk, but it takes three one. times a day for two weeks. Which but in our on the building, floor of a building, and there's a long hallway to the elevator, and then a long hallway from the elevator to the front door. So basically, just getting her kind of halfway to the front door of our building is longer than to walk out. So she hasn't even peed yet. She doesn't know how to walk yet. There's a lot. Now, are the floors tile? Uh, it's it's a highly buffed uh, cement slippery. floor. <laughs> It was like, you know, even without, uh, even with four legs, it's like Bambi on ice when they buff the floors in the lobby. But so it, it was like five to 10 minutes. And she was moving so slowly that it was more like 20 minutes to get oh. to the front door of the building. Oh. Um, and, you know, we, we didn't know how to support her with that. Oh, uh, it was. But when did you first call them? I remember that first helpline call. I couldn't believe you picked up. Oh, I mean, we started getting scary. What? What? How, why'd you call the helpline? Yeah, eight four four train walk. Yeah. So what happened was, um, you know, we had all of these emergency questions that we'd call the doctor and the hospital that did the surgery. They're they're wonderful, amazing but, doctors. But they're also an emergency hospital, which means that uh, they're dealing with a lot. <laughs> they're always in certain. You can't talk to the busy. doctor with yeah. questions, um, and which is understandable. And all of a sudden she woke up one day and she was panting so heavily. Her She stopped eating and drinking. Her well, heart on, was no, no. beating so she, hard. It's not that she woke up. We woke up and we found her like halfway out of her bed on the floor, just panting and her oh. heart racing. Her she heart, wouldn't eat. No, her heart was beating so hard that her whole body would lurch with each pump. Oh. It was so terrifying. And um, basically we couldn't get a doctor on the phone uh, and my sister, who's much better at Googling than I am, um, found tripods.com. I instantly like panic posted a million questions in the blog. <laughs> um, Renee, you, I think you replied by saying that, you know, there's an emergency helpline. Wait, hang and on, hang on. Two minutes guys, of that. Guys, call. She replied. Hang on. Loud <laughs> <laughs> to me. And then also... The call, first, call, call you called them at like 10 p.m. I feel yeah, like. I called you guys like in the middle of the night, I think. And I think the first two minutes of the phone call were me just going, <laughs> I couldn't speak, it was so terrifying. Um, and you know, you talked me off a ledge, and then about a thousand more ledges. <laughs> and, um, we were just given zero guidance, and uh you know, it turned out to just be post-op inflammation, um, but, and, and bad pain management, but, um, I mean, here's the thing. We all occasionally prior to this, like we'd all see, everybody sees a beautiful, cute three-legged dog once in a while. And that's kind of their extent of interactions with three-legged dogs, with tripods. And, 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 and I know they come in and out of vets and hospitals all the time, but the point is in our community and with the, because of the access we had at the time, there just wasn't a lot of detailed intel and like a rich track record like you two have so that in that first phone call with you another thing that i feel like you two are always so good at is you have a really rich track record to pull from but also are really really careful never to make any guarantees about outcome and you just you just laid out all the possible outcomes for us really clearly possible causes made sure that we stayed in touch with the vet and this and that it was just so incredible <laughs> ah yeah god thank you thank you that means and, so much you know at doing this this will be six seven, 17 years. years this year later this year um that we've been doing this so yeah we have seen a lot of recoveries we've seen a lot of 
good stories, mostly good and some bad. And so that kind of lets us prepare people. You know, we're not vets. That's what we make it very clear. We're not vets. This is what we've seen. These are some things you can talk to about your vet, uh, talk to with your vet. And every but dog is different. Every, yeah, every, every case situation is different. different. So that was, was, was that we were just like sitting on the couch watching videos of other dogs, like within oh, a week yeah, running yeah. around. And we were just like, what have we done to our dog? <laughs> Why isn't this? Her? I feel like you even said to guard against that. Like we were sitting there watching. I won't compare. <laughs> it was so there is a, a dog right now that um, we're, we saw who is, in, you see, he was a four-legged dog. He's incredibly athletic, got into a bad accident. And now he's, he's running around like crazy and doing really amazing things. But, you know, we kind of hesitate to share that because. This dog was an ultra athlete. Yeah. He literally ran and hundreds I did a rod of miles. Dog. So, oh. right. And so we don't want to give people that expectation right away. And, and even if the dog does bounce back the way we all hope they will, the minute you let your dog go nuts on three legs, you know, you're just kind of asking for a, a bad yeah. situation. Speaking of nuts. Nuts. So nutty. there was so, this initial scare, but you've had a couple other instances. Let's talk about that. Right. So yeah. what else, would, what were the, like, the most challenging things you guys encountered after that? immediate recovery i mean i feel like one big thing there some were like big shocking things some were little things like practical advice you give us about when we were wondering just how to support her and like, literally just like here's a you should use a sling in the meantime you can use a scarf or a towel uh hey why don't you look into physical therapy you, you setting us up so the physical AMC is one of the biggest things that happened. yeah so we were never told anything about physical therapy in fact we actually asked and were told no no no, you don't need that um and not by you not by not you, by you. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is new york everybody i mean i would hear stories like that about people living in the country but not in the biggest city in the in the nation that's crazy it is. yeah i do also think to your earlier point i think that yes Vets and doctors see dogs that recover quickly. And I also feel like there's a degree of, um, I think there's like an emotional support idea there. Like, it'll be fine. I'm imagining his emotive. And in reality, yeah. I could have been yeah. on school at the time. Well, I just remember when I first, when my sister first sent me uh, your website and I was just like, tripods. I had about, tripods open. I had about 15 tabs open on different uh, pages of your website, or different information. And one of them, <laughs> was just a photo gallery of what the recovery wound looks like so you can prepare yourself before the surgery and i was like that is something that i really could have used i didn't know it was going to be unbandaged i had no idea how traumatic just what it visually yeah yeah like we didn't realize kennedy kept saying she didn't realize it was gonna be like civil war battle yeah, we brought we picked her up and she looked like a civil war amputee like, like oh the swelling and the bruising it was terrifying um but what other but you, uh last question what other challenges were well i mean during those first two weeks, like one thing, another night I'll never forget was, you know, you have to keep the wound dry and uh, there was a blizzard <laughs> and it was like a foot of de foot deep slush on the streets in New York. So it was, you know, the whole thing was like, bum, 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 and just getting her the 10 minute walk out the front door, like out of our apartment door to the front door of the building. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, this is normal. I've saran wrapped my dog. Um, <laughs> we have, smart. Super we smart. have double uh, slings. Double slings. <laughs> Stefan is holding the front end of her body. I'm holding the back. I'm holding the caboose. We're moving about like <laughs> two feet per hour. We <laughs> can get her to pee in under the two minutes. And uh, it was in that moment that Stefan said to me, "These are the these are the moments that make life worth living." It was <laughs> never um, forget. Yeah, uh, I, I, but, really, uh, I really think it like, I'm curious to get your read on it because I know it's informed your life, but I, I can't believe how much it changed it? our, we'll come back to that. I can't believe how much it changed our lives going through this passage with her and how much closer we got. I mean, I'm sure it enhanced our bond with one another, but also just with Nutty. It's so, like that first time when she finally, we were at our, we were really at a, an emotional low 
talking to each other about what are we gonna do? And then Nutty, for the first time after the surgery, slowly just stood up. And we looked over and she's wagging her tail, like every little, and it was like the biggest moment of our lives. We both just started weeping with relief.